G'day, and welcome to Ollie 35mm, user-based, quasi-empirical, cheap and cheerful videos on Olympus Zwico branded 35mm lenses. And in this case today, I'm talking about the OM series macro photo group lenses and also accessories today because you really can't have macro lenses without some of these accessories. And today I'll be giving you genuine Olympus accessories all bar one. So we have the macro photo group. It started in 1973 when the Olympus OM series started with the OM one and they had four lenses. They had the nifty 50, 50 millimeter F 3.5 macro, which was a one to two macro or a 0.5 times magnification and we had the 80 millimeter f4 which was a one to one macro although if you bought the accessory filter that would if i can show you that there hopefully that's in focus that would actually take your <laughs> just trying to show you so you could actually see it uh that will actually take your one to one macro to a two to one macro and very very quickly before i go into the other two lenses that came out with it is uh to quickly explain uh, macro magnifications uh one to one macro means that if something's 36 millimeters long you'll find it 36 millimeters long on your 35 millimeter negative or the 36 millimeters of the negative if it is a one to two macro or a half times magnification you will find that something that is 72 millimeters long will fit onto your 36 millimeter negative. If it is a two to one, then something 18 millimeters long will fit onto your 36 millimeter negative. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how those ratios actually work versus magnifications. I hope it did anyway. So going on then, so we had a uh, 0.5 magnification, a one magnification, and then, then we, uh, to two magnification, of course, with this, uh, with this filter. Uh, then we had two other lenses, which actually look like little CCTV lenses uh, in the first instance anyway. Um, there was the 20 millimeter f3.5 and the 38 millimeter f3.5 and they sat on an adapter ring called a pm-mtob adapter so when you if you decide to buy one of those you'll need to have the adapter as well otherwise it ain't going to fit on an om system camera or adapter and the 38 millimeter went roughly from uh, two magnification or, or two to one through to four to one or four times magnification. And the 20 millimeter went from four times magnification to 12 times magnification or four to one and 12 to one. So you can imagine something, oh, look, I think it's something as, as small as three or four millimeters. You can actually fill a 35 millimeter film frame with or a full frame a digital sensor, of course. Uh, they were very manual though, uh, and they were eventually replaced, and I'll talk about that in, in a little while. So they were the four lenses that uh, we started off with, with, with a great gamut of um, uh, range, you know, in, in which to do mac macro photography with. Okay, the 80s came around, and five lenses were brought in. I'll just get them out of the way. There was a 50mm f2, uh, which came in to uh, actually sit alongside uh, of this uh, little lens. That, and that was a, um, uh, a one to two, uh, so 0.5 magnification as well. The 90 millimeter F2 came in, and that started giving you a little bit of distance. This minimum focusing distance of this fella uh, was 23 centimeters. The minimum focusing distance of this fellow was 40 centimeters. So you can get that little bit further away from your subject. So you didn't scare it, you know, especially if it's insects or something like that. I'm sure that they uh, don't like having a lens pointed up their nose. So they were both infinity focusing lenses, such as uh, this little fellow here. So you could actually leave them on your camera all the time. Unfortunately, I don't have a 50 millimeter F2. I have seen some example photographs or some sample photographs on Flickr and it looks absolutely brilliant. And one of these days, hopefully I will own one. The other new lens to come along 
was the 135mm f4.5. And again, this was infinity focusing provided you had this extra accessory, which was the 65 to 116 millimeter auto extension tube. Uh, it would not go to infinity, infinity focusing without it. So this is actually a fairly expensive lens to buy once you buy the adapter to go with it as well. This is a um, 1 to 10 macro. So it uh, is actually not really any higher magnification than you would find on a close focus or macro, as they call them, uh, functions on a zoom lens. However, the quality is so much better and this is a beautiful lens. I like this lens a lot. So don't go discounting it anytime soon if you enjoy flower photography uh, or large insect photography because this will actually do you very, very well. At 135 millimeter, you can get a fair distance away from your subject and uh, not be up its nose or proboscis, I suppose, if it's a uh, an insect. So they were the three new ones and the two replacement lenses were, <clears throat> excuse me, auto versions of the uh, little 20 millimeter and the 38 millimeter uh, lenses that came out in the 70s. So they looked more like this little 50 millimeter lens. In fact, they're roughly around about the same size uh, as that. They had same, basically the same sort of features, except for they actually had faster uh, maximum apertures, which was really handy because it made it easier to focus, basically. Uh, and that was the 20 millimeter was an f2 and the 38 millimeter was an f2.8 now as far as prices are concerned the little 50 millimeter that i've got in my hand here is the cheapest of the lot you probably find them about two to 250 australian dollars going upwards uh, in the 135 and the 80 millimeters so just looking at the lenses themselves forgetting about the accessories that are on there uh, they will set you back about 300, 350, sometimes 400 Australian dollars. Keep a bit of an eye out though, that you can get bargains uh, out there. I think I picked this one up for about, uh, about 250 Australian dollars if I remember rightly. So stay patient, but remember you have to buy accessories to actually make these fellas work as well. So either the auto extension tube, the bellows, or, and I haven't shown you these yet, uh, some extension tubes and you can either buy the genuine Olympus ones or you can buy third-party ones It's up to you So we're looking at about uh, three to four hundred dollars uh, for these fellas as well the The 20 and the 38 millimeters are funny ones and they can be around about five hundred dollars Australian and uh, I was actually hoping to actually show you a 38 millimeter uh, auto, but unfortunately I haven't been able to buy one at a price that I'm, I'm prepared to pay. They can go as low as $500. They can actually go as high as $900. And again, don't forget, if you're gonna get the little old ones in the 70s, the old manual ones, you will also need the PMMTOB adapter, and they can be quite expensive in their own right at about $200 as well. The most expensive, uh, sorry, my apologies, the 50mm f2 will sit between about the five and $600 mark Australian as well. So it's roughly about double the price of this little fella here. But like I said, uh, I've seen some uh, samples and it's absolutely amazing not to discount this little lens because this is a great little lens as well. One of my favorites. And then this fella here, the 90mm f2 commands probably the highest price of the lot in the macro range. And they will sit between about $900 and $1,100 Australian. So you're looking at quite a bit of money for this fella. And also this is the heaviest of the lot. This is about 550 grams. Uh, so I've taken it out on a day trip uh, on a few occasions and you come home with a very sore wrist. In fact, I go from a wrist strap to a neck strap when I'm using this fella just to give my wrist a bit of a break. So that's sort of rough costs. Now, cost of the accessories, 
this fella will set you back probably about 200, maybe 250 Australian dollars. That's the uh, 65, 65, 66, I can never remember. 65 to 116 auto extension tube, so two to 250 dollars. A set of bellows will set you back probably around about the same price, sometimes a little bit more, 250 to 300 dollars. But it all depends. There are some accessories that actually come with these. There's, there are extra stages that you can get, or an extra stage you can get uh, if you wanted to. You've got the double cable release, which you will need in some cases. And there's also a copy stand uh, that actually goes on the front here as well. So all of these accessories uh, will all add to uh, the price of this particular fella. Uh, the bellows but the bellows is probably the you know it's not the most versatile uh, but it's it's probably it's photographically it's probably the most versatile of of the lot however it's also quite large and, and hard to sort of take out uh, in the field you will generally need a tripod and this is why this comes with a tripod mount make sure you buy one with a tripod mount uh, these fellas would be generally better off with a tripod as a, as a general rule. Hand holding it can be a little bit hard. Now, if you can't see your way to two, $300 for these accessories, there are other things that you can do, and you can buy yourself extension tubes. Now, these are the genuine Olympus extension tubes, and they actually look identical, except for these three are apart, and these three are all together. They actually look identical from the front, but they're not. These are manual, so there's a, a manual stop down of your iris diaphragm and these are automatic where there's a little lever which will actually stop down your iris diaphragm on your camera uh, sorry on your lens i should say and the re and you can work out which one's which is by on the back if i can show you these these just have the numbers on there for the, the actual depth of the rings themselves, it's 25, 14, and seven mil. And these fellas here say auto on them. These are more expensive, about $50 a set for these if you, you keep your eye out, about 100 to $120 a set for these fellas here. But they are actually also quite, uh, quite versatile. And if you use the 25 millimeter on your little nifty 50, you get a one to one macro, which is very nice. Okay. Some more accessories. On the OM1, OM2, OM2 SP, OM3, OM4, uh, you can actually get uh, focusing screens, which actually help aid focusing in close-up situations. They are the 1 to 11 and the 1 to 12, probably about $50 each. Be very careful when you're changing them over. Another handy accessory to have is the Olympus Vario Magnifier, and that will give you one to two magnification, two to five magnification of your actual viewfinder. So that slips over your viewfinder piece, and then you look through there at a 90 degree angle, or you can move it around. But really, to be honest with you, it's sort of really that 90 degree angle and a little bit of side movement is really all you're probably going to need. And then you can go to 2.5 magnification for that extra fine focusing, which is really handy. Um, don't buy one without an eye cup. <laughs> From experience, I can tell you it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work. I actually had to buy a second one because I bought my first one without an eye cup. And these things will cost you as much as the whole unit itself, between $50 and $120 as a general rule. And very, very quickly, the last thing I want to show you is you can actually put filters on the front. Now, these are, these are only accessories, uh, and the idea is to put them on the front of a, a normal uh, lens, a 50 millimeter lens. Okay, that's a very, very small amount of what you can actually get in the photo macro range. Sorry, my apologies, the macro photo range. Um, I've got no time for anything else. Uh, you really need to do some more research before we go any further. Thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you very, very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.